For this year, we decided to remap the courtyard at ACI. The courtyard is a unique green space located at the center of our school. It has greenery, two sets of wooden benches, a wooden platform, and many unusable features. The main challenges within this space are safety, uncomfortable seating, and unmaintained greenery. There were many attempts of revamping this courtyard last year, however, it has not been used regularly for over a decade. Located at the heart of our school, it does not bring our community together as of right now. How might we create a safe and welcoming courtyard that will unite our community? To effectively repurpose this space, we gauge what students and staff think through surveys. Out of the 53 students, the majority see themselves hanging out, eating lunch, or studying in the courtyard. 41% of these students wanted to add picnic benches. With new insights on what is in demand and survey results, our chapter brainstormed who would use the space, what exists, and necessary additions. Most of the existing items are obstacles or hindrances. What we need more of is seating, practical greenery, and safety additions. We recognize how this could become a multi-purpose space through persona brainstorming. An example of a persona that we created is Bob, who comes to school early and reads in the courtyard for some fresh air. Through our site analysis, an overwhelming number of issues surfaced. Thus, our mentor Rika suggested a phasing concept. We used this phasing concept to summarize the key changes that we need to make. Phase one is about safety and access, as those factors are our first priority. The second phase focuses on upgrading existing elements, for example, the greenery. The third phase focuses on inexpensive additions, and the final phase focuses on expensive additions. So with our phasing concept in mind, we started brainstorming some ideas. We wanted to tackle one idea at first, but realized many of these concepts were vital to our revamp. So with the help of our mentor, Rika, and a landscape architect, Grace, we came up with our proposed solution, a combined plan. Here's what our plan looks like. So to start, we plan to only allow access to the courtyard on certain days during lunchtime, as the most accessible entrance is connected to a club room. Moving on to our design for phase one, we want to add planters on the concrete ledges with low maintenance seed on plants. The idea is for the community to add more planters every year, and this will pre prevent climbing on the ledges. Moving on to phase two, or sorry, we also want to add a barrier in front of the exposed electrical box, and to increase accessibility, we want to add um, level pathways with dirt or mulch, and we're also looking into adding ramps. Moving on to phase two, we want to uh, reallocate the existing benches on the unsafe upper, upper level to the lower level to create an outdoor classroom. Uh, to, for, well, to tackle the concerns with greenery, uh, one of our general members took the initiative to research what kind of plants are best used to upgrade the hill into a garden. Moving on to phase three and four, we want to implement more areas with seating. One area will include a, uh, an area for, with a pic pic picnic bed table for um, shelter with the umbrella, and another area includes benches between the nooks of the walls. So this is what our minimal viable product looks like. It includes seating, greenery, and uh, is in a relatively safe and accessible location. Okay, so then, what is our goal? Adrian stands out among other schools for having a central green space within its building. However, due to a lack of funding and attention, um, this initiative may fail to continue in the future. For, with extensive support for this product, our school will realize the potential of this space and foster greater community involvement. Therefore, we aim to host workshops with other organizations, such as an indigenous learning company called Minikai, to make environmental care and learning enjoyable. The additional $1,000 allows us to afford more tools of gardening, seeding, and maintenance expenses that allow the courtyard to sustain itself in the future so that we can host more school-wide events. So with all these plans, what are some uh, challenges that our chapter has overcome or foreseen in the future? Well, at the start of the year, uh, one Up was not a verified vendor of our school for TDSB, so it delayed a lot of school meetings and we lost time. This then raised safety concerns with our new administrator and it was difficult to access the space. After relentless emailing, we were finally able to host a, a site launch in like three months. We still struggled to come up with concepts for our design, uh, but we were able to do that with the help of our mentors. To increase the de demand in the space, we started to advertise more and encourage students and the community and admins to take action. So we're even, even though we are still struggling with all these issues and safety and access, we hope that with the support from 1UP and, our, and the judges, we're able to overcome these issues and achieve our goals. Thank you for listening. This is where you can contact us.
with um, looking at this, and I thank you for thinking about accessibility before I even had to ask, but have you looked at what other schools have done to rejuvenate their courtyard? And have any of the other schools with their, that center courtyard design been able to, in the last little while, renovate their, um, renovate? So I guess the main question is, is there any model you can actually follow that another school has done? Um, so thank you for noticing our detail to accessibility, our, our mentor Rika suggested it. But um, we weren't really able to find any schools with like a courtyard in the center of their school, so it was difficult to kind of have like, to research that part. But um, I've personally visited other schools before, Markville, Markville actually, actually, and they have a lot of seating, so we kind of, yeah, so we have a slide for that. Um, in this slide, you can see that before this hallway is like empty, but now they added like more tables and benches and more people are able to use that hallway to eat and like um, and do their homework. So that's where we got the idea of adding like a table. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I just have, I maybe have a couple questions. My first question was, I'm, you go to the school, so you've used the space quite a bit, but how do you observe, oh, you don't? No, no it's, it's not closed. closed. It's been closed, it's for, been closed for, so it's not oh. regularly used. Yeah. Okay, maybe I didn't catch that. So the, the space is unused right now? Yes. Okay, okay, so I'll go to my, other question, is, it, is the land still owned then by the TDSB? Oh uh, yeah, it is. It's a part of our school, just like neglected. It's closed, yeah. okay. So is the, when you talk to people about the plan and the phasing, did you talk to like teachers and administrators and the principal and things like that? Sorry, could you repeat the question? <laughs> when, you were, when you were kind of coming up with this plan and you were, it seems like you did a lot of um, engagement with surveys and, and workshops and things, did you involve the like teachers or administration or principal? Yeah, we definitely did speak to our principal a lot about this because he, um, he I mean, he's in close ties with the TDSB and he's very um, strict about uh, certain things that we can do because there's a lot of danger that um, comes with trying to revamp this courtyard. Um, we also, we spoke to a lot of students that, um, I mean, it's been close for a long time that a lot of people really want to go to the courtyard, but um, yeah, so they, they all want us to revamp it. Um, the teachers as well, they would really like to, um, see the courtyard open again, and they, they really helped us with our phasing process as well, Mr. Cross, um, our uh, supervisor, and another teacher named Mr. Petito. Um, they're also like architecture teachers, and um, so they helped out with like, the, uh, yeah, the teacher survey. We had a survey for students and uh, teachers as well, so yeah. Just to add on to her point, we weren't able to add the teacher survey because there wasn't enough time, but um, as Mega said, we did have a teacher survey and um, a lot of staff were interested in revamping the space because they told us that apparently like a decade ago, they, a decade ago, they had like bands and like live singers or something in that space. So they really wanted to like open it up, but we sh kind of struggled with talking to our principal about it because he's relatively new to our school. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, no, it did. It provided a lot of clarity. I think I uh, might have missed something there. And then I, I'm sure that teachers would love the idea of the outdoor classroom, especially. Okay, thank you. Um, actually, to follow up on a couple of things, um, I guess it wasn't clear to me on why it's not open and what makes it dangerous. and. You started talking about a ban 10 years ago. Can you tell me a little bit more about how this space is currently unsafe? Yeah, so there's a lot of uneven surfaces. Like when we had that site visit, I accidentally rolled my ankle in one of like the holes because it was on a hill. 
um, there's all like there's a lot of branches like everywhere, so like that's also like a safety hazard because people can also trip on it. Uh, just to add, there's also um, an exposed electrical box. I'm not sure if you saw it. Um, but we actually surveyed our teachers to find out why the courtyard was, wasn't open for over a decade because the space is actually very beautiful. And they didn't know. <laughs> a lot of like the teachers were saying, oh, like just nobody really uses it. Like it's kind of messy and like people are just aren't interested in using it and don't know about the space. Um, I kind of just guessed that people just um, didn't want to do the upkeep for the place and just uh, didn't want to hire people to make sure that the grass was like cut and that type of thing. Um, yeah. Um, I have a couple more questions. Um, one thing is I really like your premise of designing this space to build community in your school. Um, and I wonder what kind of thought that you and that you have put in to make lots of different people feel included in the space and feel like, uh, you know, what kind of thought did you think about how, how you could build community through this space and, and to make lots and diverse people feel safe, included, and um, can enjoy the space? Yeah, I, um, me and the entire club, we all thought that um, many uh, different like clubs and societies um, in our school could use the space for certain meetings or events. Um, there's this spirit week that we have a co every couple months called uh, Holiday Hall Market, what, which we thought would be good outside. Um, the Eco Council loves to just like go out and garden. Um, so we thought that this place would be the perfect space for them to also help out with that. Um, and also just like, uh, in on normal days, just the seating in general, people can um, sit on. There's an image of like this square. Oh, where is okay. Um. There's like a like a <laughs> sorry. There's like a chair um, in the middle where a lot of people can gather around and just sit together. And I feel like. Just sitting in the in a near vicinity at the beginning of the year, a lot of people tend to say, "Hey, like, what's your grade? Um, what are your classes? That type of thing." It's just. Um, so, also through our student surveys, we like surveyed the entire school, and it, um, our teacher helped us with that. So, uh, a lot of like different students who are interested in sports and things like that, um, kind of added their ideas, which is uh, a, a lot of. Different students wanted just a place to like hang out during spare or like lunch, um, and we kind of noticed that a lot of people were going to the cafe or like the library, but it might not be the best place um, if they want like fresh air or to talk like loudly. Um, and if I can ask just a few follow-up questions, um, I think I missed it because you're going pretty quick, I'm running out of time. Okay. I was just, because I'm, I'm not sure if I understood what was the solution, because uh, like what was the design solution and what was the funding strategy, but I think maybe you could just flash that last image of the, the design that you came up with. We, we actually have a model, but I'm not sure if like, we're supposed to show it after or right now. I'm going to give it to one of the one-up. Um, we'll, we'll be able to show it to the judges. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Good job. Thank you. Okay, thank you.